Welcome back, everybody, to another Code Peterson tutorial. We're at the start of the Major League Baseball season. I thought it would be a fun way to celebrate that with a baseball card Photoshop project. So we'll open up Adobe Photoshop. For the size of this project, we'll go two and a half inches wide by three and a half inches tall. Resolution is 150 pixels per inch. I'm using RGB color 8 bit, and then we'll click Create. Once we have that done, then we'll go over here in the bottom right hand corner and we will create a new layer and go over to our shapes section in our tools on the left hand side and we'll select rectangle. And this rectangle, we may resize this a little bit later, but I'll kind of just give myself a little room around the outside of this card. And for the size of this stroke around the outside, the color doesn't really matter because we're going to replace that eventually anyways. Uh, the stroke, we will see the stroke, but I'll just use red for right now. And I am going to try this uh, four pixels around the outside of this. And I think that works good for now. Later, I may change to uh, the width of that line. But for right now, I like how that looks. Uh, once we have that rectangle done, we'll make another. And we'll create another rectangle. This rectangle will be down in this area. And. The outline of this one, I, I'll keep it the same width, but this one I do want the color to be white on the outside of that. And uh, the color for this one, I might make that red for right now. And again, I can always rechange those colors later if needed. All right, that part looks pretty good. Next thing I wanna do is make another layer here on this. And we'll go over to our shapes. And this time we'll go down to custom shape tool. And if you click the drop down menu up here at the top, we have all these folders that come with Adobe Photoshop. So the folder we're looking for is the one that says legacy shapes and more. And then in that folder is another folder called 2019 shapes. And we'll scroll down quite a ways. And then we'll find the one that says flags. And then we want to find a pennant that we could use for this project. Now, it's a little bit easier, not a whole lot easier, but a little bit easier if you use one that has straight edges that doesn't have a lot of waves in it. But it's entirely up to you. Use whatever one you want. I'm going to choose this one just to make it a little simpler. And then I have that selected. And then I can just click and drag and draw this pennant on here. And if I select this move tool and I move my cursor right here, I can see where I can rotate that around. And I'll make this about that big. And for the fill of this, Press enter to place. And then for the fill of this, I might go just that red color right there. I think that actually will be fine. So I can use red fill and red for the stroke on this flag. Again, these don't have to be perfect right now. Maybe I'll make the stroke of this one a bit smaller. Let's try two. And I think that'll look pretty good there. If you ever need to go back and change anything of your of your pennant, you can always use control T. It's the shortcut on there. You can Rotate your object or resize it or do whatever you want. Once you're happy with that placement in there, then you can press return and close out of that. 
All right, now for this part, I would like this flag to be filled in and it's a hollow shape right there. Uh, so I will make a layer in between my rectangle two layer, which is this one, as long, actually as long as it's just right underneath your pennant line. So I'm gonna select the layer underneath my pennant and make a new layer in there. And then I will use my polygon lasso tool. So it's over here. And if you find where it says polygon lasso tool, and this is why I said this is a little easier if the lines are straighter, I could do that. You can use any of your other selection tools if you have waves with your flag. But once that's in there, then I can use shift backspace and I will fill this color in with white. And this is looking pretty good. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in a picture of a baseball player for this baseball card. All right, so zooming out here a little bit. And on the internet here, I went to Unsplash, which is a great place for free images. That you can use for even commercial purposes. And then, and I just searched on Unsplash for baseball player and found that one. And so if I select my rectangle here, my rectangle one layer, and I add a new layer above it and use control V, then I can use control T to transform that because obviously that's much too big and I'll resize from the corner to make sure that it stays scaled. And I'll just have it be roughly the height of that rectangle that we put in there. All right, now what I can do is if I press return to place it and I hold down alt on my keyboard and I move my cursor right between my baseball card and that first rectangle, you'll see how that cursor changes from a finger into that where there's a little square with a bent arrow underneath it or to the side of it. If I hold down Alt and move my cursor there, that'll happen. Then I'll click with the mouse button and it automatically fits it into that shape. How cool is that? Then I can just click and drag and move this picture to where I need it to be for this baseball card. So kind of make sure you get centered in there a little bit. And that looks pretty nice right around there. All right, now for the next part, I wanna match these colors up just a little bit better. So I'll select this rectangle here. And if I click in here in the stroke area, and then there's this little rainbow rectangle. If I click on that and move my cursor over the picture, I have these this eyedropper tool. I can try to find a nice red or maroonish color. That works pretty good with that picture. It matches the picture and would look good for this theme. So I do like this picture here. I'm gonna copy that hex, that hex value in here. I'll click OK. Change the color to that, looks good. Uh, then if I go up here to my pennant, I can go here to the fill and it actually just remembers my color right there. Otherwise I could click on that and paste it in there, but it remembers it, nice. Then I'll go here to the bottom rectangle and I will change the fill of that to be the same color as the others. And this is starting to look pretty sharp right now. All right, so what I wanna do next, just move this pendant up a little bit more out of the way and I need to do the same thing with the shape beneath it. Here we go. And we need some text in this area here. So we can go ahead and make a new layer at the top and I'll use my type tool. And for the color of this type, this will be down here in this area. 
I'll go with white. And the type doesn't really matter too much. It kind of just depends what style you want to use for this. So maybe even if I wanted to do something kind of boring like Arial, I could use regular. And I could type first name. And then I could make another layer with some text. And then in this one, maybe instead of re Arial regular, I could go Arial bold. And I'll type in last name. And I don't know, as long as there's kind of a contrast between it, I think we're okay. Uh, bold works well sometimes. You can select the option that says black. That gives us a nice contrast there between the first name and the last name. And kind of space these accordingly in your document here or in your text area where you could type that. So again, you can fill that up as much with as much text as you want. You know, it depends on what you want to have in there. Maybe somewhere you're going to put in there the name of the, or like the number that they wear and the position that they play. You could use that also. Uh, another thing that we can do is with this up here, we can also maybe come up with the team name that goes in here. So for that, add new layer. And I'll use my type tool. And I'll type in, and this, I might use a different typeface. Um, Bevis Nua, or however you say it. I'll choose the regular version of that. And we'll put team in here, or whatever you want the team to be. And the colors are kind of up to you also. Um, for this, but I might select my type in here then go to the color and use that same maroon color on there and I'll click OK. Now to fit this into this flag over here, I can go to highlight my text here and then at the top of the window, we have this T with a kind of an arc underneath it and if I click on that, I can warp my text. I'm going to choose arc, but we're not actually going to arc it. I'm actually just going to change the bend to zero. And then we can adjust this horizontal distortion on here. And I'll kind of play around with that until it looks like it would kind of fit in that rectangle above. Once I get it close, I'll click OK. I can move this up here and control T to shrink it down a little bit, rotate this, and that does not look half bad. If you need to go back and make other changes to your type, you can always re highlight it and then you can always go back up here to your transform adjust those properties in there. All right, this is really coming together kind of nicely, I think. Um, I might center this a little bit more vertically anyways. So if I select all of these layers, maybe bring these down just a little bit. And maybe the first and last name and this rectangle two, maybe I'll bring that down about that far. And then if I want to, I can even adjust this other rectangle that we had. If I hold shift and drag it up from, 
uh, from the middle there. And I can kind of move that and adjust the height of that. And then I might do the same thing down here also. So once we get down a little bit lower, we might notice in here that we need to adjust size with control T of our baseball player a little bit more. In there. And I think that looks like it's working quite nicely. All right. If you resize any of these uh, objects, sometimes it'll adjust your the stroke around the outside of that shape. So you might need to adjust those a little bit in there. Um, but most of the time you don't run into too many major problems. I just like mine to match up pretty nicely with that. This up here, I might even see what this looks like with a stroke of one instead of two. I think that looks good. All right. Last thing that we can do for this baseball card. And this, it really, again, isn't anything super necessary, just kind of a fine detail. We can go back here to, to this and here, and we can search in Unsplash for old paper or maybe old cardboard texture. I'll tell you what, I actually kind of like this one right here. I might go with this. Um, but any one of those will work. And, you know, you could try different ones. And that's what makes this fun is no matter how many times you make these, they all can turn out a little bit different. Uh, I'll paste that in there. And rotate this around. And just kind of fit it in there as best as I can. I'm not trying to fit it in there perfectly because I don't want to distort it. Just something that gives it a little retro kind of appearance in there. And then over here with that layer selected, we can go to our blending styles. And we can try these different blending modes. I don't mind hard light with this one. Um, let's see what else we have. Hard light and also like linear burn would be fine too. Hard light, a little bit lighter. Linear burn is going to give you that darker. So either way, depending on which one you want to use, uh, you might just also then want to adjust your opacity a little bit and bring that down until you get kind of the look that you want. So that's hard light on there. And there we have it. There's our opacity. Just kind of play around with that. I might leave mine right at 55%. And there you have your baseball card. So you can make baseball cards for your favorite team. Maybe you have uh, a good friend or a, or a sibling or even a cousin or somebody who plays Little League Baseball or, or plays for their school team. And you could take a picture and make a baseball card for them and make their day. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. And I appreciate you watching. Get you on the next tutorial.